My lesson is that adding figures to a painting will always enliven it because as people, we, we always, our eyes naturally gravitate to the human form. Um, so if you have a, a huge landscape at a beach or at a farm, um, and if you put a figure in there right away, that will become the focal point. Um, so I will, I want to, <clears throat> I also want to thank Bill Prickett, who's helping me with the, uh, the tech part and my wife, Maria, who's been greeting you, um, and, uh, for helping me and supporting me and all this. I think what I want to do <clears throat> first, uh, is do a, a short, a little short demo, demo of doing the people. I, you guys all did people with pencil and I will do a couple with, let's say this is a, well, I'll do a larger one, a four inch person. And there's the, there's the middle, the top, bottom. And then let's say I do another one in the distance, two and a half, one and a quarter. Okay. <clears throat> I also want to reinforce the importance of putting out fresh paint. I've got brand new puddles of paint here. If you try to mess around with sticky gummy paint from last week, you're really just gonna frustrate yourself. Um, and I also will make an, an, a plea to just save your, save your bounty towels or your paper towels because um, unless they're really thin, if you have a good, good quality, you can use them week, week to week. There's no reason to fill, out your fill up your trash can with paper towels, okay. Any other lessons, life's lesson I could do? Okay. What's that? Well, yeah. Um, and I'm gonna, when, we, when we look at my drawing before I start, I'm gonna show you some things that I took out um, and simplified um, and you might wanna do the same. But anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna take a little bit of raw sienna or yellow ochre and I'm gonna just gonna put a little Little dab up here. Ray, can you close that door? And I'll grab some blue. And I'll just push that blue up around the, into the head. Now remember the, the shoulders are the width of another head on either side. So I'll pull this down. The, the hand come, the arms come down a little bit below the waist. I'll grab a little bit of red. Uh, I should have done it the other way around, but this guy's going to have. Well, let's say these are red shorts. So then I'll finish off with a little bit of the raw sienna. Boop, boop. And don't get too fussy with, with shoes and things. That, you can kind of look like. Um, a figure has anvils on the bottom of his feet if you get too, too uh, messed up with that. Let me get another one. Um, okay, this person is going to be seen from the side, a little bit distance, and I'll do red up at the top here. I'm gonna push that red up a little bit. And the heads right now just are just these uh, yellow blobs. I can take a little touch of color while it's still wet and sort of touch in a little bit of the hair. And I'm telling you that this, this person here is on a cell phone. That's why that arm is sticking out to the side like this. Right, uh, even if in the farmer's market, she's, she's calling her, her friend saying, what is it, what do we need for that recipe or something like that. So you can do, you can do all kinds of things uh, with, with uh, the shapes of figures. Um, one of you, I think, Ann, you had somebody mow, mowing the lawn with a, re, a real mower, one of those old real mowers. All right, so that's uh, sort of a quickie on, on figures. Um, Did you do a dog? 
Yeah, you can do a dog. And let me do a, a figure next to a figure. Here's, here's another, this guy, got his buddy with him. I may be just... You don't want to be too fussy. Like say, okay, this is a belt. Uh, this is a, this is a, you know. A little bit of dark up at the top. And we got a couple of figures, not, not very interesting uh, poses, but um, most of the people in our <clears throat> in our picture. And these are, these are some I've done in the past. There, here you got, and sometimes the colors will bleed from one figure into the other and that's, that's okay. Um, these are pictures of, of painting friends of mine at easels or kneeling at a, at a, at a, a small, a small easel. Um, farmer carrying buckets. All right, so I'm gonna put all this aside. All right. <laughs> now, um, you see my drawing here. Let me, let me tell you a few things I changed. Even since uh, the, 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 the video I sent you, I've got a tree over here that's mainly green. Uh, nice summery look. These are pine trees, pretty dark on this side. I got rid of that other tree in the middle. That one that's kind of a silvery. I thought, why do I need three trees in the background? I like that mountain, and I really wasn't seeing much of it before. So I'm gonna, I, I'm bagging that that middle tree. Just skip it. <clears throat> um, I want this there to be a feeling of air and light coming in. Um, I have this figure, this tall guy here with his hands in his pocket in the photograph. I've got him giving his son some money. So I've got two figures down here, and that will sort of be my focal point, a little bit off center. It's uh, one third of the way up. I've got a couple women over here, and I, they're right at the edge of your photograph. I, I push them over so that they're not sort of running off the edge. I've got three figures here I want to keep in light. They're in shadow in the photograph, but I want to keep them in light. So I'm going to have two, two, three and then maybe one over this lady that's in orange, um, having her slightly different um, yeah, walking pose. So I'm gonna do that. Now, um, Ann Pearson, you asked a good question on an email. He said, what happened to the whole touching three, three edges? Well, before I started, um, here's my, here's my uh, thumbnail sketch. I made a line over here for the, the height of the, Tents. I made a line here for the eye level of most of the people in the background. Um, and then a couple lines up here showing me where the trees would cut in. And, um, and then this is, this, is the, this is the line where the, the sunlight is gonna zigzag around some of the shadows to come into that distant section. So I did, before I started dropping people in, I did make a few marks on my page so that I knew where they were. Oh, this, oh, by the way, this, this guy is not gonna be exactly in the center. I like him off center. All right, uh, put the switch away. Okay. So in the past, you've seen me cover almost half the page with a sky or with a foreground. Um, and this time I wanna preserve my people. So I'm gonna paint all the figures first and some of the very light tones of the, of the tables. And we'll just see how this goes. And I'm gonna do about, yeah, well, okay. Here's this, this figure here, Papa. He's got his arm coming down there. I got a couple of legs. What color do you use for uh, that kind of? Yeah, color I'm using I'm using uh, raw sienna. It's a kind of a yellowy color. There we got that guy, him, and now I'm going to look, make sure. Okay, now this. 
This is this blonde girl here. I got to be careful. I, I want to keep some light there, but not too much. Um, if I want, if I want someone with a slightly darker complexion, I can get a little burnt umber. So this, this person is sort of standing there, a little bit of an arm over there. She's got the longer legs, shorter pants, shorter shorts, and her complexion is a little bit darker, more olive. And if you have an African American tone, add a little bit of cerulean blue, and you'll it'll uh, you get a good dark, nice rich skin tone there. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna before this fella dries out too too much. I'm gonna take my cerulean blue. I'm going to give him a, a shirt. Down here. And I'll, I'll, put, I'll put some of that burnt umber down here for his khaki pants. I want to get this so that I can blend some of these colors together so that they're not quite like postage stamps. Get a little, little color up there. And what color is the boy? Um, he's got a dark blue shirt on. And I'm using a pretty darn large brush here. And I'll give him some khaki pants. Okay, let's get a couple more figures here. You did not wet the paper first, right, Ned? No, no, I didn't didn't wet the paper either. So I'm going on pretty dry. And I forgot to give her arm color, so I will jump back into that. You know, I'm just jump, jumping around here. This is uh, a little bit of a bent leg down there. I go back to my photograph. This. This woman is in blue, so I'll throw a little bit of blue in there. I'm gonna go around, I have a hand, this woman's carrying a handbag, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch. Yeah, get some blue pants on. Put a little bit of a diagonal mark there down to a bag. I'm not being very good about cleaning my brush because I'm trying to move quickly, but um, here's the little boy walking. Now in the picture, he's walking toward you. Um, for my, it's not a big deal, but in my, in my mind, he's walking away. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's get, get some of these. Now, this girl over here has a, has a, a white t-shirt. I'm taking a little bit of, I wanna leave the white, the white of the paper. So I'm gonna, but I'm gonna put the shadow color. I'm gonna go around her arm and you see how she's got some color coming up where that shadow shape is going sort of around her butt and up her back a little bit. And I'm gonna leave that so the shirt stays white. She's got pretty What's dark color. What's the shadow color? What's that? It's the shadow color. Yes, I'm just doing the shadow shape really. 
And she's got kind of those stretchy pants. So they're very tight fitting here. So not a lot of baggy cuffs. Right down to her calves, there's that. So she's, she's about done. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna do another, this woman over here. She's got fairly dark hair. Taking a little bit of burnt sienna, which is kind of the reddish brown. She's a dark haired woman. Keep that in there and then Now she's got this handbag or a backpack. I like the stripe on it, so I'm gonna paint around that. You see that? Mm -hmm. Everybody? Okay. Yep. And then she's got sort of khaki pants. I don't wanna be slavish to the photograph, but it's helping me make some decisions here. There she is. And I'll give her a little bit of shadow down, down this leg. A little bit of shadow here. Again, I'm, I'm giving, the sun is coming from this side. So uh, the shadows on their, on their um, legs are gonna be on the right side. I'm gonna give him one here too. Kick this kid in here. And I said, I want one other. I'm gonna stop in a minute. I'm gonna do, get this one last figure in. And I'm gonna give you time to do some work. The next steps will be bigger landscapey sections, but I'm gonna get this woman here. In your picture, she's uh, in, in orange. Not really wild about that very long t-shirt she's got, but I'll, I'll go with the orange. A little gamboge. <clears throat> That'll be a nice, nice bit of color on that one. And I'm gonna say she's got some, some short blue pants. I just, I don't wanna push that <clears throat> color all the way down. A little bit of blue in there. And she's got a handbag off to the side. I'm going to push that over there. Go one, two, four, five. Okay. I said I'd do eight and I guess I'm going to, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to give you a chance to work on a, a bunch of figures. Ah, uh, this, this lady doesn't quite have, she's the blonde one. So I'm not going to paint her hair way at the top. I'm going to leave this, um, and come back. I'm gonna give this guy a little bit of a hat. I do like his red hat. Okay, so enjoy your welcome. Okay, um, off you go. Uh, oh gosh, I've got a pretty darn big one. This is like a number number 10 or number eight. Um, don't, get, don't get real teeny because then you'll be thinking about putting ears and eyelashes and, you know, little features in uh, belt buckles. That'll get you really tied up. Um, you have a bigger piece of paper than I do. So I, I do have a bigger piece of paper. Um, so, you know, these are different size brushes here. Um, you could go with this, with some water in it, it'll get a nice point. Um, you can get some more detail. Boy, I don't even know what number that is. Probably number six, something like uh -huh. that. Okay. Yeah, try to be sort of loose. Um, we'll take about, I think that I've been about 13 minutes so far. So I'm gonna give you guys some, some time to paint. Um, and then I'll come back and we'll, we'll work on sky and background. All right. So um, I'm gonna, Bill, should I pause my recording or just leave it? Okay. And if you guys have questions, um, sometimes the questions are helpful in the recordings too. Oh, I know what I want to do. Shoot. No. Uh, no, I remember. I, I want to save some of these lights. I'm going to put these, um, the tablecloths. So basically, I'm doing my light figures.
and I'm doing some of these tablecloths. So I do want to get these tablecloths in. So go. Uh, and these are going to be fairly light. I want to, yeah, I want to get the color, the color of the figures. This, this, is, this is what kept, kept me up at night, wondering what, what order I was going to do everything. Yes, I do want to get this red tablecloth. I'm not going to worry about the, the uh, what you call it, the... Um... And the people behind and in, inside the tent? I'm not going to do any of them. Okay. They're all going to be in shade, so I'm going to let that go, at least for now. So these, these are the red covers for those tents. And I'm painting them around the figures. There's another red one right there. Yep. <laughs> Who's that? Is that my phone? Oh, sorry here. <laughs> Okay, so I, I did add those tablecloths, the red, yellow, a little bit of purple in the foreground. And now I'm definitely stopping. Happens when the tote bag goes into her face, the water. <laughs> What's that, Woody? The strap from her tote bag goes right, the, wa the water is still wet and it just, the strap goes right up into her face. Oh dear. <laughs> All right. What color did you use for that yellow in that one? Um... Yeah, uh, I think I, I think I use the Oriolan yellow or permanent yellow. It could be a lemon yellow.
think I use Camden. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's pretty. That's uh, that's a good strong color. You know, these are all your light, colorful values. It's expressing summertime and hot sunlight. All right, how are people doing on figures? We're gonna to move to another step. Anne Marie, how are you doing? Your microphone is off. I'm doing okay. Yeah, I, I was uh, thinking maybe one more minute, but you know. That's fine, right, that's right. <laughs> Did you get some of the uh, tablecloths in? Oh, no, not yet. Not yet, just yeah, figures. Let, let, yeah, put a few, we won't do the tents right now, but if you wanna put some of those tablecloths, the ones that are in sunlight. Okay. And, you know, I went with blue and yellow and something, but, you know, if, if you wanna, if you've got a figure wearing red pants and you got a red tablecloth next to it, that's not gonna look good. You can always change the tablecloth to another color. Right, yeah. But you and I have done these scenes up at, up at West Tisbury where people are walking the entire time. I know, I know. Right? <laughs> it's something to be able to put, you know, put something in place and it stays there. <laughs> That's right. They're waiting in line for Morning Glory Farm. They might be standing still for about one minute. That's all you got. That's it. It's got to be quick. How did you say you getting black? I don't make black, but I mean, uh, I use I use a the, a dark blue and a dark red make a pretty dark color. I was just gonna say that it's nice that it didn't start raining the way it does on the vineyard occasionally. <laughs> yeah, and then you're that. painting under the porch. That's right. <laughs> We've had that happen before too. There's some positives. Positives be, to be working indoors through the winter. Okay, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to start on the next step, which will be putting some some sky in, which um, we, we, uh, which involves floating some water on the paper first. Um, but I'm. I'm going to also use that sky color to cover all the tents on the left hand side of the picture. Um, I'll keep the other tents fairly bright, but all the others will be a slight tone. Um, yeah. Can I ask you a question? I, I hate sure. To, is, would it be, I think the word is suicidal for me to have a woman in the foreground say her hat but really in the foreground, like in the yeah. lower left-hand corner, like a big sure. sun hat on. Yeah. Who's bigger than anyone else. You know what I'm saying? It's just- Right, a right. As, as long as her I'm head- I'm not sure if I like it. <laughs> as long as her head is at the sort of similar eye level to most of the others. You don't want to have her head above the tenth. That would look like a-, like a... No, her, her head would be about the size of a 50 cent piece in the lower left-hand corner. Yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. And, and then the, the legs would go down almost to the bottom. No, you wouldn't see her legs. You just see oh. her, the, the okay. back of her neck and hat and kind of... Yeah, yeah. So, you, yeah, she'd be a really big foreground figure. <laughs> like Bruegel used to do. Yeah, yeah, Bruegel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Bruegel. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, all right. I'm going to pick up my um, my my largest brush, uh, my kind of a squirrel brush. Doesn't even have a name on it. And I'm going to put put pure water across the whole top half of this painting. And if you have a sponge, you can maybe use the sponge to 
put it on now. I gotta be a little bit careful. I'm going to do, I'm going to go around the tents. So I'm not going to go, I'm going to go water around the tents. It's sort of like pyramids over here. Like it could be like the great pyramids, the great pyramids of the farmer's market. Okay. Okay, now this water is coming all the way down and even through the center, that, that middle tent down at the bottom there. And it's gonna go all the way down. Now I'm gonna go around my figures, the ones I've just done. I'm gonna go just down to about where the grass would start. All this is covered. Go around my people. Okay, I'm gonna keep this tent light, but underneath the tent, I'm gonna have some tone. Oh boy, oh boy. And some of that color is gonna go, okay, here we go. Yeah, I'll just check it, okay, so. Ah, uh, mm. it's, it's a sunny, it's a sunny summer, summer morning. It's a warm summer morning. So I'm going to take a little bit of my Oriolan and I'm going to throw it. It's too pale. I'm going to throw it right up in, in through there. Come on, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more heat in there. There we go. All right, dabbing, dab, 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 throw. All right, now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take some cerulean and some ultramarine. I think I like the ultramarine better. It's a nice, here we go. Come on, I keep this. That's cerulean. Yeah, no, it's really ultramarine. I, I put some cerulean down. I didn't really like the looks of it. Okay, throwing this on down. And look, look the, I'm painting right over all these tents, even that one right in the straight back, except not the ferry. All right, I'm going to take, because all of this stuff on the left-hand side is in shadow because the sunlight is coming from the left. It's illuminating all of our figures on the right. But everyone on the left side is going to be just silhouetted. Underneath that tent, I'm putting a few, a little bit of color underneath the tent here. I'm just, I'm just killing all the white, really. Going around his shirt. Uh, and what color are you using in those areas? This is just this uh, ultramarine blue, maybe a little touch of cerulean in it, so it's not just pure blue, color right out of the tube. Ooh. All right, now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna let you, if you wanna throw a little pink or a little Yellow, right where the where the mountain and the sky hit, you could do that, and then throw while it's wet, throw the blue on there. Um, once you put the, the blue on, you don't want to fuss with it too much. I'm gonna have a little stronger blue on the right here, and there we go. I'm gonna take a take a break now. That one that wasn't very long, um, and let you um, carefully. 
really cover about half your half your painting with uh, with that sky color. And the yellow was for just the feeling of a, a little bit of a morning glow. Yeah, I don't like a flat blue at the top. It's just a little bit boring, but maybe that's just me. Did you use a flat brush? What's that? A flat brush or a round brush? I was using a flat, but you can use a round. Is there a reason I'm seeing a person all the time instead of seeing the painting? Yeah, me too. You're I see what? you. The one who just said it, me too, is the one I'm always seeing. Oh, Jennifer, you're popping up. Uh, yeah, I keep getting up, other right? people on the main screen. Okay, if, if any of you speak, yeah. the you will become the screen. Jennifer right, but I wasn't just speaking and I've got, so, I've got Woody on the screen all the time or no, I've got somebody else. If you go to the picture of the painting, yeah, the screen, and you click on it, you'll see three dots in the upper right hand corner. Yeah. And click on those dots and say, yeah. pin. click yeah. on them, and that will pin the painting. Oh, okay. Okay, I got it. I was, I didn't know what pin meant, but now I do. And that's a major thing, unless you don't want to see me. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's the, the pin unpin is a, is a good deal. Okay, thank you. I still see you. I don't see the picture. What am I supposed to do? Look all over this. Do you have, are you on gallery view? I don't know what I'm on. Well, you got to get everybody up and then there'll be two, two frames that are Ned's and one is the picture and then pin that one. Okay. How do I get to find gallery view? Okay. Up in the top corner. Top right where it says view. Top right corner. I don't have top that. Screen. I do not have that. Oh, now I see the picture. Okay, you see this, the view? Oh, now I see you. <laughs> Just talking. Because okay. the picture came back. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so up in the top corner of your screen, you should yeah. see a little icon. It's a little box and three dots, and it has the word no. next nope. to it. No? Yeah. Nope. Um, can you turn your screen around? Huh? And hold it up? Is that possible? Do you have a laptop or a desktop? I have a computer. Yes. I need a laptop. You have a laptop? Oh, so I Desktop. Yeah, you don't have the camera. What am I thinking? Uh, Roberta, it's got to be on your screen somewhere. If it's not on the top right, I, I know you've done this before. It's, it's somewhere else. I know, on the screen. but I can't find it now. Some corner of the screen will have the word view. Take your mouse up to the very far I'm corner. I'm not using a mouse. Oh. Um, oh, view. Okay, when I touch this, I get view. Okay, nope, lost it again. Goes away. Yeah, you just gotta hover over it. Went away again. How does that happen? Ah, got it. Okay, click on it. I want gallery view, right? Right. <laughs> Now I see everybody. Okay, now find the find the Ah, uh, got it. And click on it. Yep. 
Yeah, right. See the three dots in the top corner? Oh, all right. Let's try again. No. When you click on the picture of the painting, there's no three dots? I can't bring the picture up. Oh, I see it. Okay, never mind. Just blind, that's all. Okay, but nothing happens. Touch the blue, three dots. Click it, yeah. And you should have the choice of pin. Nope, it's just the hand. Oh, now it come up. All right, pin. Yep, Go on, yep. pin. Yep. Ah, love you. <laughs> Terrific. All right, I'm going to uh, move along here. I'm going to, I mean, we're going to get the, the, the green of the grass in um, with some, some dark shadow tones. Um, and then we'll, we'll do a little bit of, the tents aren't all that tricky to do. So um, I may do the greens and the tents next. I'm, I'm being careful. I don't want to paint the tents while the sky is still too wet because then they'll bleed, but I, um, my, my uh, sky is trying to set up. So, okay, stay with me. Um, we need to get the other half of the painting covered, and that's that bottom half with the uh, with the with the green. I'm, I'm, and I'm going to float water in through here again. I'm going around my figures. This is why I did the figures first. I just bring the water around them, basically pushing it down. And if I if the the water goes over their feet, I don't really worry about that because. The feet can have some other colors on them. Okay, push, 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 push. Okay, down, down. Downward strokes on these figures, on this water around the, the vertical figures. Okay, the hair. Okay between her legs, I'm gonna have green. So I wanna make sure I don't paint green into the, into those legs. Oh, look, those look kind of crazy. All right, how are we doing? <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, I'm going into my Oriolan yellow or almost any Naples yellow works, permanent yellow. And I'm going to give a little cerulean blue. Mix the two of them together. Yep, yep. And I've got a fairly light green. Here we go. Again, I'm just it's just following the water. Wherever you put water, this green will go. Around his legs, between these two figures. Yeah, I noticed that. Um, I don't mind leaving a little bit of white on the edge. I don't mind leaving a little bit of white at the edge of some of these figures because it makes it look like sunlight hitting them. Okay, are you guys watching me or are you painting yourselves? I don't really know. No. <laughs> yeah, point Now I just got some blue stuck in my brush. That, that drives me nuts. Yeah. All right. 
Oh, that's a nice screen down there, boy. Okay, now. All right, now, that's just yellow and blue. And I'm gonna now get some tent colors in here because I, I think this is dry enough. Yep. Um, okay, I got a red, I got a purple. Those, those sort of look like out of the tube reds and blues, don't they, on the tents? But they're, I mean, I know you won't Yeah, make they do. Them, but well, they're... they do. Uh, I, there's, there's, there's one in here that's sort of purplish, so I'm going to get a little blue and alizarin. Ultramarine blue and alizarin. But I want to keep it light. Now, of these tents, each one has a light side on the left and a little slightly darker where it's away from the sun. So here's a purple. I'm going to throw this baby in here. And I'm going to do the entire tent, light side and dark side, and underneath. Okay, there's one tent. I'm going to go to a bluish one. That's, wow, that's really pale down there. There's a bluish one down here. A little bit of cerulean. It's barely any color at all. Let's get a little more color into it. I spray them. I spray them with water and then I put a sponge in the palette and then they stay a little bit, they stay a little bit longer. They last a little bit longer. Okay, that's a blue one. And then I'm gonna see a little bit of a purpley one at the, at the end. Oh, the heck with it, I'll make it a little more red. I'm gonna have this one be kind of a reddish color. All right, now I've got my nice big blue tent up front here. Cerulean blue and ultramarine. And I want to keep it pale on one side. But the whole thing is going to be painted light and dark side all at once. There goes that. And now I've got to hit my red. Now this should be just dark enough. Okay, alizarin and alizarin and cadmium. And here we go, red. Oops. Oh, come on, come on, get out of here. I know. Is it more cad than than alizarin? But a little bit of both, I guess. Okay. Uh, I got to keep it fairly light on this light side. So I'm putting more water in it. There we go. That's lighter. Coming down here. Going around that purple tent. Coming down around this guy's hat. And there is some color of the red that comes underneath that's red. Under, it's the red right there underneath that purple tent. Okay, so there's that. Now, I don't want to get you guys too. All right, thanks, Tim. Too goofed up. But this now, this, I purposely left my, my, my grass and let it dry a little bit because now I want to put in the shadow tones of the grass down here. So I'm going to get lizard, uh, aureolin. This is a critical part here. Oh boy. 
All right, I'm gonna have, ooh, wow, that looks strong, but I'm, I'm gonna go with it. That's Oriolan and- What colors, and yeah. Oriolan and ultramarine. Okay, so I have this- have Oriolan, what could you use? Uh, Naples yellow, what yellows do you have? I have Naples yellow. Yep, that works. So that, that shadow is going behind these people. I remember I want these people to be in sunlight, even though in the photograph they're not in sunlight. I'm gonna throw a shadow on the other side of them, almost out to this man. Reload the brush, Oriolan and Ultramarine. And she's also in some sunlight. see why you wanted to leave these people, put them in first because, whew, you paint around those shadows. Okay, well, this one, this one's there, that one's there. Then. I'm gonna do my, trade my splatter across the bottom here. Mm. And I do also want to take and notice that under these people all have a little shadow coming out from them. They create a shadow, these figures. And then underneath these mm -hmm. uh, tables, there's a pretty dark, a pretty dark tone there. You see that? There we go. I've got a pretty darn big brush here. Okay, where's... Okay, I think I'm about, I'm, I'm gonna have a stopping spot here. Um, I wanna get you to do the grass, then go to the tents to let the grass um, set up a little bit and then go put in the shadows in the grass and the shadows under the people and under the tablecloths. I'll let I you, need the I'll grass. Let you. Naples yellow with what? Uh, I, I'm, I, I like the ultramarine blue, but mm -hmm. um, cobalt blue works. Okay. All right. One more time. One more time. That? Grass is cerulean blue and aurelian, or no? I, uh, the grass was aureolan and ultramarine. Oh, okay. Thank you. I think you told me that already. Right. You repeated. I'm repeating this. Yeah, I only have um, uh, gamboge and cadmium yellow. With ultramarine. The cadmium yellow is a nice is a nice bright color. Okay, the ultramarine.
Ned, did you wet the grass first before you went down? I did, yep. Thank you. It just, it just allows the paint to flow. Otherwise you get all these back and forth brush marks. It looks like painting a barn or something. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to do my phone interview. Yeah, Charlie, yeah. Uh, no, it starts the clicking sound. Okay. So you got about three days worth, and then it, it, it wasn't getting warm enough during the day or something. Huh. Like, holy oh, smokes, I'm going to put my stuff in. Yeah, usually it's the end of mid February, right? Right. Oops. Uh oh, there's a child. Oops. No, um, it's learning. <laughs> well, you can all be all green on here. Right, but I took the yellow and put it over by the. I picked up the. You go and get some blue. Yeah, and yeah. And bought the yellow and the blue. Oh, that's. Awesome. Uh, Let it work. Everything's wearing. Yeah, I could do a link to that. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. You keep it one end of that box. Ned, sorry to ask, the shadows on the ground are uh, ultramarine and... Uh, yeah, Oriolan again. Oriolan, okay.
This is where you get the color in the paintings and those and the people in the tents and everything else is uh, lights and darks. Well, we, uh, <clears throat> we've got a lot of, lot of color. We've got the whole paper covered with something, I think, at this point. There are a few light areas left, maybe underneath the tents over there. Um, uh, but we still have a whole, to make the bright colors look exciting, we're gonna need to put some darks in and those will come in the trees. I'm gonna put in a mountain first then a light tree over here, then some pine trees over here. And then these greens that we have back here will pop in underneath these tents on the left. If you look at your photograph, right underneath the edges of those tents, it's very dark. It's as dark as the green up above. So we need to start to put some of those in and we can, we can put some people in there too, um, distant people if we want. Okay, so I'm going to Going to work on. I, I'm going to put the uh, the the mountain in next. And the sky is certainly dry, so it shouldn't be any problem dropping this in without without dribbling color or having it blend. Um, I see it as a pretty darn. You know, we think of mountains as the purple mountains majesty, but I see it looking pretty blue. Um, a pale blue though. I'm going to add cerulean and ultramarine. Do I like it that, like that? I'm going to add. I'm going to add a little touch of alizarin. I'm just feeling like it's cerulean and alizarin. Okay. Oh, just pushing. Okay, here we go. Ready? Uh, bang! Push the thing down. 
if you've hiked these mountains, they're up, then you got this little plateau and it keeps on going. Boom. I need more color in there. Okay, I'm finishing the mountain off up in here, pushing those mountain colors down. Now I'm not really painting a um, couple of different blues and then blizzard and crimson, mostly blue. And these edges I'm gonna keep, they go around the tents, but I use my water. I'm using water down here. I don't want a lot of color. I'll tell you why in a second. Okay. Um, so really, Marie, just try try not to, uh, try not to keep up with me. Just just watch me paint for about fifteen minutes, and then I'll give you time to paint. Um, now I'm going to paint the. The tree over here next, this is a new gamboge yellow, no, oreo and yellow with some uh, cerulean blue. Okay. Boom, boom. Get right on the edge, it's a fairly bright yellow and I'm pushing that yellow right into the sky, the uh, mountain color. I'm leaving the edges to look a little bit raggedy. But as the, as the tree moves away from the light, it's gonna get darker. And now I'm gonna pull in a little ultramarine. Come on, come on, come on. And I'm gonna, Again, the edges of the tree, the ed edges have this, these flicks of the brush stroke, so it looks like leaves. Uh, New Gambo's yellow and, and the ultramarine blue. And this is the dark side of this tree. I'm going right down to the edge of these tents. You've got to be careful here. It's all right. Okay, this this tree is not a major player, but it's 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 holding some space there. I'm going to continue with those. The greens with cerulean and new gamboge. Come on. I can't mix the colors fast enough sometimes. And this is the tree line just behind the tents. I'm not going to get too detailed here. And, and Ned, the, the bright yellow on that tree that's not a player is what again? That's the ore Oreolan. Got it. Thank you. Okay. So this, these are just, this is just lumpy, lumpy greens back here. And in a couple of places, I may throw a little bit of dark so that the side away from light. Is a little bit darker to give it a little three dimensionality. So it's not just a flat. There we go. Boop, boop, boop. See that uh, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. Okay, now I'm coming into the hmm, I, I really see two different color trees over here. I'm going to Throw some, mm, no, raw sienna, I decided. Uh, these, this is one level of, and I want to leave some holes in here. Raw 
Ross Sienna and Ultramarine Blue. Uh, get a little more, it's a little darker at the bottom. Still going around some of these tents. Leave some holes. Now that's that's the tree that's in sunlight. Now I've got a, a tree way in the distance. That's burnt umber. And I can't get a brush big enough here. Burnt umber. and ultramarine blue. And I don't really see, we're not really seeing through this tree at all. So come on, big, big globs of color. This will be one of my darkest stars. I'm gonna take a little alizarin crimson. Red is the opposite of Green, so if you add red to green, it gets really, really dark. Going down around these tents. Ooh. Ooh. To there. Okay, this is the dark tree going across in front of the light tree. Trying to keep the brushwork kind of fresh and interesting over here. But I definitely have one in front of the other. Now, I did what we did a few days ago. I'm going to take the, my, the, um, the chisel end of this flat brush. I'm going to scratch in a few lines. These are the indications of the, the tree here, the branches of the tree, just breaking up some of those darks. And I usually scratch in the darker areas because it stands out better. A little bit on this tree, not much. Okay. Hey, Case. You don't, you don't want to overdo it. So put it in there and leave it alone. Now I told you, while we've got this, these dark greens, I'm gonna get a, a smaller brush. And I'm gonna lost my Okay, I'm going to, underneath these tents, I'm going to get this dark bluish green. I may go around some of those tent poles. I have a couple of little figures sketched in here. I may go around them. I'm not sure. Remember, even those tent poles, which look white now, they are really the old sky blue from one of our first passes. I'm gonna come down right to the edge of what seems to be the tabletop. I'm gonna go around a couple of other figures. Elaine, these, this is where I might put some color and put a few extra figures back in the distance here. Okay. So what you're doing, you're what you're doing is really simplifying. I, I mean, it's it's good. It's, I mean, you're simplifying the background. There's editing and oh they, gosh, yes. You know, you, you're not painting everything you see. 
No, you know, I can't even see, you know, it's so confusing back there, you know? Uh-huh, right. No, it's, uh, I get it, it's editing. Deciding what's important. Right, right. And I've decided long ago that the people out front were the important ones. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a lighter green underneath this distant white tent. I'm going to go around my red figure here. Go right through all that. Damn it. I think I, I, think I was, I want to put a few figures here, but I don't. So that's just less ultramarine blue and a little more yep. uh, aerolian. Yep. I'm going right down almost to the tabletops. I see a guy there. I'm going to put him in. Now, even underneath here, I've got green. Whoo. Oh, brother. <laughs> now I'm going around some sort of fake figures behind the tables here. Um, and I may Add some fig figures right near the end that are behind there, the vendors. Right. Okay, there's the greens, there's all that. And uh, okay, now, and then I'll take a break. Um, now I'm gonna do the dark sides of the tents. So the red, that's in shadow is this one. And then underneath that red tent, because we can see up into it, it's really dark. And that goes all the way back. What color are you going to be in the bottom of the tables? Uh, I've already painted them. What do you mean? Oh. I'm thinking, like, where, where, where's he, let's see, where has he been? Okay, now. Okay, so the dark purple. And then this dark purple goes underneath. Go there. There are some tent lines in that purple. And then the blue, I just have to get a darker version of that blue. Mm. All right, little, little hat on that. Can you scoot the canvas to your left just a hair? It's going off the- Yep, yep, okay. got it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks for pointing it out. <coughs> I 
And now this is the underneath of the tent. So it's pretty dark blue through there. That's pretty much. All right. Just a hint of blue with that front face. So it's light, it again, medium. Yeah, what happened here? It went off and now it's sideways. Now it's sideways. Oh, shoot. What happened there? Okay, give me a second here. Um, now, why? What happened? Why, why is that? No caller ID. Somebody's trying to call me. I'm going to put delete. Now I'm back, but I'm sideways. Now I'm, going to, I'm just going to, I can't. Uh, and I'm going to paint a little bit of blue. It's still sideways. I know, I know, I, I can't, uh, I'll get there. I'm just painting the other side of this blue tent. So I've got light blue, dark blue, light red, dark red, light purple, dark purple, light blue, dark blue. And I'm going to, I'm going to stop there and I'll try to figure out this camera thing. Oh, turn your blodgy tech around and upside down. <laughs> I know, I know, I can see what you're saying. Why this is this gyroscope thing just so confounding? That's not it yet. And then it'll stop and say driver mode. There we go. We got it. I'll tell you, I don't know why the camera just sitting there does things like that. It's certainly right. annoying for me and worse for you. Oh, I see. Yeah. Maybe not today. Yeah. I used um, a, a blue with a little bit of red. Blue, blue and red make purple. Blue and red. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, I hope you all are, are uh, changing water um, periodically because when you get into these greens and then reds, things get really, really dirty and then, uh, then your colors are less clean.
the case. I think so, yeah. Yep.
Anything you want to tell us before next week, Ned? You know, I was going to, but you know, with time the way it is, um, next week will be a, and I'll send you a video. We will be uh, limiting ourselves to three colors, a blue, a red, and a yellow. And we'll mix all our greens, all our purples, all our oranges from just a limited palette. Um, and it will be, the scene will be of sap buckets in a, in a uh, obviously attached to trees with a snowy foreground and a rock wall. And uh, there won't be any people in it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sure. <laughs> See you next week. Okay. Um, my last couple, I'm, I'm just putting a few dark figures in underneath the tents, uh, silhouettes right over here. Yeah. Let me I'll pull it up so you can see. I've got some people underneath there, but they're not as dark oh. as the light as the foreground figures. And then I am, um, these tents on the left are way too bright. So I'm going to tone them down a little bit, but I'm not gonna color them all. I'm gonna um, leave a couple sides of them a little bit lighter. But, um, just gonna to tone down some of these tents a little bit. And I could say one of them might be a red tent. So I'll put a little bit of red in there. Oh, you are putting color. Oh. So I am toning down these tents on the left because they're, they seem a little bit bright and a little bit flat. And I really didn't know that until right now when I'm looking at them.
Start all over again. Mm -hmm. Well, it's... how many times have you done painted farmers markets? Ah, uh, yeah. Right. Well, you heard me chatting with Anne Marie Reard, and we in the summers we do these at the market. And people are moving, and it's like, oh yeah, oh. Doreen O'Connor and And Ned, uh, it's upside yeah. down, but you'll, this will be recorded the other way, or does it matter? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah, when, when Bill will, will you has send a us, Will you send us, like, when you complete it, will you send us a, all a photograph of what you did as a completion? Okay, I can do that. That's oh, easy. I was, on, then, the wrong, I was on the wrong uh, image. Okay, you're, you're fine. <laughs> Yeah, the upside down one is is a, a picture of the palette if you want to see the yeah. mixtures. But um, okay, thank you. Next time. It'll, it'll be right side up from the studio, and then next week I'll figure out how to do the camera. So because it is handy to have the two shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't forget the whole thing's a work in progress. No, I am. She does pretty well on that score. Yeah. Use us as guinea pigs, right? Okay. So while you guys have been painting, um, I've, I've been putting in a few sort of shadowy figures behind the tables. They're just um, they're just silhouettes uh, with some dark paint, a little bit darker than the green that was back there. Um, I toned down some of these tents on the left. They were a little bit too too light, um, but I think we've got a colorful scene with uh, some action and people, you know, people engaged doing stuff and. Uh, there's a lot of uh, lot to keep the eye moving around the picture. It's wonderful. Um, keep in mind, we all work our left sides of the brain very hard during the week. We balance a checkbook or make out a list for uh, grocery shopping and that kind of thinking. And 
this kind of work stretches the brain on the right side, the creative side. You sort of look and say, oh, that's too light, that's too dark, I'll fix it. And you sort of lose yourself a little bit in it. And it's, a, it's good to exercise those muscles in the brain. <laughs> but I hope, uh, I hope it's not been stressful, but a chance for you to kind of dive deep into something you haven't tried before.